Look at these little sweet baboos. Making sweet, sweet naboos on my bed. Aww. This is Sherpa, by the way. You've all met Wendell. Hey, wee woos. everyone, it's Moms here and today I am doing my February wrap up. Yay, February is done, I'm so excited. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into what I started, finished, and DNF'd in the month of February. Uh, let's start out with what I've read because, um, yeah. Uh, the first book that I'm going to talk about, this one does feature a lot of death, murder, violence. Yeah, children were killed, so if you're uncomfortable with that, I am terribly sorry. But the first book is Deadly Decisions by Kathy Rakes. This is the third book in the Temperance Brennan series. This is the book series that inspired the TV show Bones, which is a great TV show if you like, uh, if you like good uh, sexual tension and murder. <laughs> I have been enjoying this series. There's a lot of science, there's a lot of murder, there's a lot of like really informative stuff, which I really do appreciate. Um, the author is in fact a forensic anthropologist, and so is our main character, Temperance Brennan. She works with the, um, the Montreal police, I think it is. I can never remember. She works with two different, like, groups in the Montreal, um, law enforcement of some sort, but she also works with the FBI. In this book in particular is about, um, outlaw motorcycle gangs, and the Hells Angels and the Banditos and some very famous U.S. motorcycle gangs are trying to kind of absorb some very uh, big um, Montreal, Quebec uh, motorcycle gangs and just kind of create a massive like North American chapter. And there's been a lot of turf wars, a lot of people are dying. The book starts out with a nine-year-old girl who gets caught in the crossfire on her way to ballet class. Like, I, okay. So when I started this, I was a little bit nervous because uh, the last book, Death Du Jour, featured uh, cults. And I don't like reading about cults. And this one's about motorcycle culture. Motorcycle culture. I'm not one who's big on motorcycle culture. Um, I am from Wisconsin. Milwaukee is very big on motorcycles. That's where Harley Davidson is. And <laughs> we get a shout out in this book. <laughs> so I mean, there are a lot of motorcycles in Wisconsin. Harley culture is big here. Uh, not me, I prefer like mod scooters and stuff. Like, so. Mm. So I thought this was gonna be pretty boring, but I actually really enjoyed this installment. Like, it was really good. I mean, that's completely subjective, but <laughs> uh, I enjoyed this one. We learned a lot about um, blood spatter and how different patterns of blood can tell how somebody was killed. We learned about there was a medical condition in here that I didn't know about. I will put it on the screen. We got like an info dump of motorcycle culture from like the beginning to now. 99. But it was interesting, like I was really fascinated by it. They, she did some interesting things with characters in here. There is a lot of violence in this one, like a lot of lot of people die <laughs> in this book. And it was fascinating. Unfortunately, as I've felt with the other books, I don't like when they're not, when she's not at work and not trying to solve murders and she's at home. I tend to not be interested in her family life quite as much. Temperance is kind of an idiot. She's like one of those, we all know one of them, who's like extremely book smart, but like street dumb. She's like really stupid. <laughs> she does, she makes a lot of very dumb decisions and jumps through some very odd conclusions. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? And she was just like, I'm gonna throw myself into this violence. It's fine. And I'm like, yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> so, there, there are questionable things in here. We meet her nephew, Kit, who is also kind of an idiot. So that's entertaining. But yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I am very interested to see what book four is. I haven't started it, but I'm curious because I don't know. I just really like this series. It's definitely not for everyone. It's dated, it's dense, it's slow pace. I, I enjoy them. I find them very comforting and cozy, which probably says a lot about me. Deadly Decisions. I enjoyed it. It's a great way to start off my February with blood and violence. 
Again, that says a lot about me. <laughs> So technically I haven't finished this book yet, but it is currently the 29th. I have the rest of today to do it. Um, and I've got like 20 pages left, but I am reading Still Life by Louise Penny. This is also a book about murder. <laughs> to be fair, I started it at the end of last year. I had been struggling with it until like last week. <laughs> so a little bit of information about this book. I first heard about it on Kayla from Literature Read Channel. She loves Louise Penny. She loves these books. They also take place in Montreal. Montreal. Sorry about the French. It's not going to be good. <laughs> um, but uh, it takes place in a little like village called Three Pines. One of the like well-loved people gets murdered and it's a whodunit kind of thing, but like, mostly it's a character-driven novel. This isn't really about the murder, it's about the people in the town and how they're affected by the murder, trying to figure out who killed beloved Jane Neal. They all know it was somebody in the town, so it's like, well... It, everybody kind of gets suspicious, it's like, what do we actually know about the people who live here? You know, it's very, um... If you've seen Broadchurch with David Tennant and Jodie Whittaker, it's kind of like that, or, um like a less sci-fi, paranormally weird David Lynchy Twin Peaks. Does that make sense? Where it's like a detective from the big city comes in to solve a small town murder and it's about the people in the town. And if you've loved those, you will probably enjoy this. Where I struggled with it though is it is incredibly slow. The characters in here are much older than I am. So we don't really, we're not in the same kind of walk of life. We're not very, uh, we don't have a lot of things in common per se. So I struggled relating to them. They're not the most interesting characters, but yet you find yourself kind of drawn to them because you want to know more about them. But also at the same time, I kind of didn't care. And because the book isn't based on the murder, it's not like a driving plot. It's just very casual, like, she faffs around and meanders and just kind of like takes her time getting to the point, which is fine because if you've watched Broadchurch or Twin Peaks, that's kind of how they go as well. I, I tried this for a month. I put the audiobook on hold for my library. It was an 18 week wait. <sighs> I think this was why I was in such a big reading slump the last couple of months because I wanted to read this. I wanted to find out if I liked it. I wanted to ingest this somehow, but I had to wait and I didn't want to wait. And it didn't strike me until like last week that I could try Scribd. <laughs> so I did. I got a free uh, 30 day subscription. They have the book and I've been listening to it. And I must say, a one-star book went to a four-star book immediately. I love the narrator. He's such a gentle voice. I just love listening to his voice. It's very soothing. It's very calm. It's very comforting, cozy. Um, I enjoy his French. Like, ugh, he's just, he's great. And like I said, it took a one-star book to up to a four-star book. It's just, ugh. So I've got like this much left. I will be finishing this today. If you're interested in picking this up, 10 out of 10 would recommend the audiobook. If you are not necessarily good at French, I would pick this up as well and read along with it. J'adore. So I started two books. One of them is Impulse by Ellen Hopkins and the other one is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. We'll discuss them more in my TDR video because I plan on continuing them next month. I DNF'd one book this month, and that was Prodigal Son, which is the first book in the Frankenstein series by Dean Koontz and Kevin J. Anderson? Kevin J. Anderson. I, this is, this is really the part where I'm, I'm warning y'all about questionable content. This is a very complicated book to explain. There's multiple perspectives, multiple characters. There's detectives, um, Carson O'Connor and Michael Madison. There's Deucalion, who is uh, a mysterious man with two hearts that was found up in Tibet. There's uh, a serial killer. There is Frankenstein 
character and his waifu and then there's multiple Frankenstein creations that we kind of get to meet. It's easier to keep track of than it sounds-ish. Okay, I, I can't remember how far I got in. I think it was like 10 chapters, maybe halfway through. The, the idea of it was interesting. Like it's got all these different things and a lot of them are things that I find interesting detectives so it's got like a crime murder thing this man it, the serial killer is he is it's a man we know who we know who it is he's going around and he's taking bits and pieces off of women so he can kind of create the perfect woman because uh, he thinks he's the perfect man and he's like taking hands off of people and eyeballs and legs and feet and hands and stuff I said hands sorry whatever. Carson and her partner are trying to catch this murderer and then I don't know like that honestly that was the only interesting part of this book for me. Deucalion was kind of interesting because he is a Frankenstein monster. Monster. In this book we know about Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley was a real person who wrote the Frankenstein novel based off of one of the characters in here, Victor, who is Frankenstein. <sighs> I'm trying to get all my thoughts out on this. The parts where I was like, mm, I don't think I want to read this anymore, take place with um, Victor and his waifu. <laughs> and uh, with Carson's autistic 12-year-old brother, whose name I can't remember, Arnie? I think it's his name, Artie, Arnie, Archibald. Uh, there was some very questionable autism representation. Um, I don't know how much research the authors put into it or if uh, they have any experience with autism. But I was like, eh, I don't know. He, mm, I don't know. My major problem with this and the point in which I decided to DNF the book is um, Victor has created a wife, Erica 6, Erica 4. Uh, she's like a, uh, one of the multiples of like it created many versions of Erica and she is one of the versions of Erica. They're kind of like all of his creations are kind of hooked up to like a computer or something or an equivalent and all of the information that they need to know is like downloaded straight to their head so they don't need to like grow up or anything. They're just kind of born already knowing things and uh this Erica is having trouble with her humanity. She doesn't want to be this perfect creation that Victor has made and she kind of wants to experiment and experience things on her own which is great cool and I was kind of interested in that plot point. The problem with this character is that her character is violently and horribly abused by her husband Victor. Husband slash creator Victor. So Victor has created her to be able to heal quickly, to not feel any pain necessarily, to be submissive in every way, shape, and form. She's kind of trained not to speak against him. One of the scenes, the act has already been done, but he um, practically rapes and beats her and is like, no, it's fine. I've created her. She's not a real person. I'd never leave a mark where anyone can see it and the only way to break somebody is to be dominant and beat the crap out of them. I don't like them to be submissive because they just naturally are. I like them to be submissive because I've beaten them into submission. I'm just nasty and violent to her because what is she gonna do about it? She'll heal quickly and like I said not gonna leave a mark anywhere that anyone can see and it's fine because she's not a real person. She's just something I created and I was like I don't want to read this. I don't want anything to do with that. But it's are you fucking Serious. Excuse my language, but seriously, like when was this book written? This book was written in 2005, which it was a while ago. Seriously, why? So needless to say, I DNF'd it at that point and I was just like, I'm not reading this. Actually, I think I waited till the next chapter and then Erica was like, yeah, he was really rough again last night and I cried and cried and cried and just she was just like because she is a person she's an actual person 
just because she was created out of meat tissue that he formed in a vat doesn't mean she was not a person. <laughs> and like, she was obviously greatly affected by what happened. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to read this. I, I don't want anything to do with this. Like the questionable autism representation, I can, I can deal with. I don't like it, especially because I don't know if it's, you know, okay. But that is not okay. I'm not going to read about a, a person being beaten and raped into submission by their their mate or creator or whatever. Like, no, I don't want to read that. So I'm getting rid of it. I unhauled the whole series. I had four of the books and 10 out of 10 will not recommend. Do not like. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I am done. Rant over. Moving on. <laughs> Also, if you didn't know, I am doing a year-long reading challenge, the If You've Got It, Read It challenge. I will link it either in the cards or down below in the description. The book that I read this month was Deadly Decisions, which counted for my sequel challenge. All right, kids, those are the books that I started, read, and finished in the month of February. Sorry it got a little salty at the end there. Shogunai. It can't be helped. <laughs> um, if you have read any of the books that I have read, please let me know. If you're interested, let me know. If you found something entertaining, let me know. Again, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my TBR, which should be coming up in a couple of days. Like, comment, and subscribe to be continued. Bye! Wait, no, that's not right. She starts out this novel with a bang. Literally. Ooh, that's bad comedy. Mm. If I remember to, otherwise I'll just be going like this for no reason. <laughs> Hold on, we're going to have to pause this. I just needed to intake it in a different medium. Medium? Media? Medium? Different way. What happens to everybody in, in Three Pines? I almost said Twin Peaks. <laughs> but yeah. mm. Where I will kind of, yeah, good English. <laughs> and my camera's overheating again, god damn it. <laughs> oh, you bitch.